leave made what I imagine was a very difficult decision to retire from football. Just talk us through how you've come to that point. Um, I think in the past month, uh, just every day waking up and the amount of painkillers I have to take and things like that, it's it's just got too much. And obviously for myself, I, I want to play football as long as possible um, and possibly can or could. Um, but just just the body, it's it's too much for me every day and it's it's grinding me down really. It's a big moment to say those words, isn't it, that, that you're retiring after a career that spanned more than 500 appearances, 99 league goals as well. Why was now then the right time for you? Um, I think just 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 waking up in the, the pain, not even struggling to sleep and things like that and waking up, taking painkillers halfway through the night. And I think that was just it. Like Everyone that plays football loves football. Um, but I think you've just got to be honest with yourself. We've just come here, your, your family, your, your partner and, and your little girl as well. How important a role did they play in this? And, and, you know, looking after yourself first and foremost, which is the most important thing at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously they're the ones I've spoke to first. and um, But they see what I am going through every day, uh, not just during work, obviously, like when I get home and how I am. Um, days off, literally can't even move, uh, can't even pick my daughter up longer than two minutes because my back goes, because my hip or this, that, and, and it's just not a way of living and I want to live. You've spoken to, to Gary McSheffrey and James Coppard. You've been very transparent about the situation and, and the way you want to go moving forward. How important was that from your perspective to, to be upfront and, and let them know what was going on? Yeah, I, I'm an honest person. Um, and for me, that's as soon as I, I thought about it, I had to speak to them because obviously they've been through it as well. Um, so to listen to them and speak to them, it was it was, it was a big thing. Um, but they've they've been unbelievable to me. They really have. The easy option would have been to, to stick around, take your money, and, and get through to the end of the season, wouldn't it? But I know you've said before that football isn't football for you if if you're not enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. Like well, even throughout my career myself, I've seen people do it, and I'm just like, oh, how can you do it? Um, whether they're in a position to be able to quit after football or retire after football and things like that, um, I'm not sure. But for me, it was. It was just too much for me on the body, really. In terms of your short time with Rovers, how do you reflect on it? You came in in pre-season, got yourself a, a deal. How do you look back on, on that time? It, it's weird. Like A lot happened, I feel like. Um, obviously, first game of the season like weren't the best for me, but um, it, 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 I think if it was any other club, in League Two, League One or anything, I would have probably just called it a day then. Um, I'm not just saying it just because I signed for Doncaster, but there was uh, a bond that I, I felt at the club and it was the reason why I did want to sign eventually. Um, so uh, for me, it was it was the fans, it was the club, it was the gaffer, it's the coaching staff, it's the players, um, the kitchen girls. It's, it's, it's literally, it was... It meant a lot to me, really. One of the things you hadn't done before signing for Rovers was scoring League Two. You tick that one off before you've hung the boots up. So nice, another one to, to tick off. Yeah, yeah, I've not done it. Um, I think that played a, a lot on my mind as well. Um, but no, just, just to get the goal was good. But yeah, it's, I didn't think I'd get an emotional, really. Um, but yeah, I'm going to miss it. Uh, you've got friends in the squad, the likes of Clates and, and Tommy Rowe, that I assume, as well as hanging the boots up, the most difficult thing is saying goodbye to to those and, and the, camaraderie in the, the camaraderie in the dressing room that you're going to miss. Oh, 100%. Um, that, is, that is definitely... Uh, I've not even spoke to him about it. Literally nobody really knows in football. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be hard speaking to him. Um, and then probably even harder seeing them face to face. Although you won't be on the pitch for the remainder of the season in a Rovers shirt, I'm sure you'll be cheering them on from home, wherever you are, hoping that they can get the job done, get promotion this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, even last night I watched it and 
I, I really hope they can do it. I, I think they will do it. Um, but I think the biggest thing is the fans sticking behind the lads and the staff and things like that um, because they really do help a lot. What is your message then, finally, to, to those Rovers fans? Just keep believing. Um, that, that's, that's the only thing. It's, it's, it's a long season. Um, so there's going to be lots of ups and downs. But um, hopefully towards the end of the season and the last game of the season, it'd be playoffs or automatic promotion. Tomo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers, thank you. Appreciate that, thank you.